Hello everyone and welcome to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. This is where I talk about all of the various crafts that I do, adventures I take, things I'm growing in the garden, um, and basically documenting uh, my experiences and stories to share with you. So thanks for joining me if you're new and thanks for coming back if you've been here a while. <laughs> Um, you can find me in other places as well. I have a link down below in the description box to my link tree. Uh, on there you can find me on Ravelry as well as Instagram. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't know what I was just about to say. Today is Sunday, February 26th of 2023, and I'm sitting down to talk about all the things that I've made in the month of February, which is not as many things as one would think. I've worked on quite a few things, but I, I did not finish very many of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's kind of been a busy week, weekend, and day. So I'm trying to squeeze this in uh, so I can maintain my posting schedule here on the channel. I've been trying really hard to post every Sunday on the channel. I don't know if you've noticed, <laughs> but I was afraid to promise it because I wasn't sure I could live up to that. And so far, so good. <laughs> uh, I do have some things coming up pretty soon in my schedule where I will be going out of town, which means it will be challenging to fit in recording things. Uh, but there are a couple weddings, uh, really wedding celebrations that I'm going to this year. Uh, one of them is at the end of March uh, for my, my best friend from grad school. Uh, and the other person is my sister. And so they are both having uh, wedding celebrations this year. They got married during the pandemic when it was really hard to get people together or even disallowed to get people together. And uh, they want to have a big um, wedding reception, basically, to celebrate that uh, happy, joyous, big life moment. So there are a couple of times this year where I will be traveling and it's going to make keeping up with the recording schedule a little challenging, but I'm sure I'll find something to uh, record and share with you. There's no shortage of things to talk about when it comes to crafts, <laughs> at least not for me. So first up, I want to talk about things that I finished in the month of February. And to be honest, that's one, maybe two things. <laughs> but one of those things is really big, and that thing is my oversized Granny Square cardigan, which <clears throat> uh, there is a feature video for here on the channel. So I am not going to dive deep into details in this episode because there's a whole episode about just this cardigan. Uh, but yes, it is finished. I finished it early this month. And I have totally been wearing it uh, to work and to church and around the house. And I absolutely love it. Uh, so it is a long sleeve cardigan. And let's see if I can put this on while sitting here. Yes. And so it's constructed out of granny squares. And it has no um, closures, no fastenings or fixtures added to it. I also did not add like belt loops or anything. Um, but yeah, it's fantastic and I love it. And I'll put in a picture here of me wearing it so you can see me, um, you know, the length of the cardigan on my body standing outside in the sunshine. Um, but yeah, I am very happy with the finished product. It was an adventure. <laughs> and I learned a lot. So, um, yeah, that is finished and brings uh, a lot of yardage out of 
my stash. Uh, so that is fantastic. Um, another finished item this year. Uh, more yarn out of the stash and actually into a wardrobe <laughs> or some functional piece, which is fantastic. The next thing that I finished <laughs> is not fiber related. Um, uh, so I've started um, painting and I've been painting uh, not for any significant amount of time. It's very recent. Uh, but my husband and I, my phone just cut me off for no reason. That was weird. What I was saying is that uh, Michael has started uh, running a game and so we've been purchasing um, miniatures. Uh, we're having in-person games and uh, the miniatures come unpainted and I'm like, ah, I, I could do that. So I did some painting this week and it was really fun. So I'm going to try to show you these and we'll see if my camera cooperates. But um, this is the largest one. <laughs> um, yep. <laughs> this is a Yeti. And so I painted him. The, the body is pretty boring, but, uh, but his face, I feel like, yep. That was fun. So I painted that. And then I painted um, three smaller ones. One of them is my character. So I'm playing in the game. <laughs> I'm playing a uh, halfling wizard. No, that's not going to focus. That's fine. I'll put some pictures on the screen. Um, but I'm playing a, a halfling wizard. And uh, so this is, this is my character. Uh, and then... Mike gave me this to paint. It's a little mimic. So it's a treasure chest, but he's got a big old tongue sticking out and he's holding a heart. <laughs> uh, and then uh, just we ordered a bunch of different um, minis. Honestly, I ordered a bunch of little um, halfling looking ones. And I wasn't sure which one I would choose for my character, but we thought, oh, these could be, you know, NPCs that we... So I painted one of these. Yeah, see, my camera's not going to focus. But, uh, but I had a lot of fun. So I painted some things. Which is totally not a fiber craft, but uh, I still get to be crafty playing around with colors and stuff. But if we go back to fiber for a little bit, I, um, I purchased some yarn from uh, Joann's and I bought it for the purpose of using it like fiber to spin. And let me just grab one of them. Okay, so, so it's KC, which stands for knit and crochet. Mm-hmm. Uh, cozy is the is the yarn. Uh, so this is a uh, super bulky, but it's a single. Let's see, it's a single, and it's really easy to untwist, and then it's just fiber that you can spin. So I purchased a bunch of these. Well, first I purchased two, and thought, let me try out spinning them. So that's what I did is I took some of this color right here, which is emerald. Yes, this is emerald. It's this beautiful teal color. And I thought I would just spin it as a solid color. So this is a two-ply fingering weight yarn um, because I wanna knit socks out of this. It is 50% wool. Let me find it here. Oh, it's on the front. 50% super wash wool, 50% premium acrylic. So I thought, hey, that sounds like decent sock yarn. So, 
yeah I am really happy um, with this skein right here it turned out just beautifully so this is a two ply yarn so what I did is I just spun it right off of here but what I did is this already has some twist in it but in order to be able to draft the fiber I spun it in the opposite direction so that it would untwist the twist that's already here I'd be able to draft it thinner and then uh, turn it into yarn from there and that was really fun and so since that experience went really well I went back to Joann's and bought more because they were on sale again so I originally got these two back around December I think it was in December but I can't remember exactly when and I you know I was in the midst of other projects so I didn't get to them right away and so I got to them a, this month and then they were on sale again so I went back and bought the rest of the color range <laughs> so I have all of the colors except maybe one I I liked them all except one so I bought the ones that I like and what I want to do is is not just the solid colors I love them and I'd love to have more solid color socks in my wardrobe but I also wanted to play around with um, blending the fibers and colors and using some of my other fiber tools so uh, I have one skein right now in the wash it came off the spinning wheel this morning uh, and so I took some of the other colors and I blended them on my blending board rolled them off into Rolex and spun them to make a self-striping yarn <laughs> um, so that's what I'm um, playing around with right now is self-striping so technically for the month of February uh, both of these are done right there's there's another skein of this but it's finished it's off the spinning wheel it's just soaking in water right now and then I'll hang it up to dry um, so I've added some more yarn to my stash now <laughs> uh, by spinning these up and so, uh, so this is another project I'm working on uh, I did spin this one as a three ply because I wanted to keep the um, the stripes intact so um, I'm making a video about this you'll see that here on my channel in in the coming months uh, so I'm excited to knit with this and see how it turns out uh, I want to play around with the solid colors and the self striping in different blends of the fibers making you know variegated yarns and things like that um, I know how this is going to knit up it's going to be beautiful but I want to knit this up before I do another blend um, because it, it looks very nice in the skein but um, I know my Rolex were not all the same size and so I'm not sure how the stripes are going to play out once it's knit so I actually want to knit with this one before I do another blending but it's just a long-term project I think will carry me throughout the year you'll probably be seeing things like this from me throughout the whole year <laughs> it's not gonna get finished in the next month um, so I do have those three skeins because I have another one of this um, that are finished so I did add yardage to my stash so I finished a garment with crochet and I finish two sock spins on the wheel and some painting for D&D yeah and I do have projects still in the works that are not finished yet uh, for example I have a pair of socks that is still in progress 
Uh, I finished the first sock. So this is out of Patton's Croy sock yarn, which is one of my absolute favorites. Uh, the contrast heel is gray marl, and the main color is magic stripes, uh, which goes with my wizard. <laughs> Um, but I have the first sock finished, completely finished. Um, so I knit mine cuff down. I'm using one of my patterns, the Elevation Sock Pattern. And what I'm working on with this project is um, updating that pattern. So this is a free pattern available on Ravelry. It will remain a free pattern on Ravelry. Ravelry. So if you'd like to get a copy for yourself, you can. Uh, but this is another pattern that I'm going back and revisiting. Uh, I realized that I only wrote this for one size. So what I am currently working on is uh, I'm re-knitting the pattern and updating the pattern instructions so that I can include more sizes in it. Uh, and like I said, this will remain a free pattern, um, but in the coming months, it will get an update. So there will be more options available, uh, as well as updating the formatting so that it's more consistent with my pattern design. Um, you know, just, just those things that you don't know when you first start writing patterns and then after you get a whole library you realize oh um, maybe I should work on these things so that's what I'm doing but yeah the first sock is finished I'm currently um, halfway done with the second one so I made it past the heel which the heel is always the <laughs> the the barrier if I were to pick any part of a sock that kind of stops me in my tracks, it's the heel. Um, it's just a totally different flow than the rest of the sock, and it's it's not something that's unique to my patterns. If I'm following anyone's sock pattern, it's like, ugh, now I'm to the heel. And then I usually set it down for a couple days before coming back to it. I was hoping to have this finished by the time I recorded, but... Alas, it is not. Uh, but from here, it's just round and round she goes until the end. Um, but yeah, I'm knitting these with the intention that they will be a gift for someone. So, yeah. My other work in progress is some weaving. So one of the goals that I made for myself this year was to be a little more diverse in what I create and using the various tools that I have to create them. And last year, my loom went completely unused. That's right, a whole year without using it. And I felt really bad. So my loom is getting some use. So... Um, if you've noticed in the past, my channel has mostly been about knitting. I added on spinning, and it's been primarily those two things. But I also crochet and weave and paint and do other things. So I'm trying to encourage myself to switch it up and do other crafts as well. So my weaving is definitely satisfying that. Um, the project is on the loom, and the loom is very difficult to hold up in front of the camera, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I currently have it warped to create two towels uh, out of some of my hand-spun cotton yarn and some commercial cotton yarn. And I'm currently into the second towel. Honestly, from here, it should be a breeze to finish it off and get it cut off the loom. So it's another thing I was hoping to have already done for you today, but it was a busy week at work and it just didn't get done. And that's okay, it happens. <laughs> so it's still on the loom, it's still slowly getting worked on. Um, I'll definitely have it done for 
next month's video. There is um, another project that saw a lot of time from me this month that isn't very far. <laughs> so uh, I do like designing patterns and designing patterns just sometimes is very time consuming to work and rework and tweak and rewrite and redo until you get the item that you were imagining. And I say you in that whole sentence, but I'm really talking about me. <laughs> so uh, I uh, really wanted to cast on my hand spun Rainbow Riot. And uh, there were two ideas I had. One was to make a garment. And this yarn is absolutely beautiful, but uh, let's be honest, I have a hard time pulling off pink. Um, I have a very pink complexion, and I, I just, I don't feel confident in pink. I feel like then I'm just like a big pink bubblegum blob, and I don't feel like it's very flattering. <laughs> Um, I like wearing dark colors and jewel tones and, and things like that. I think they complement my, um, my skin tone very nicely. So I scrapped that idea and decided to instead make a shawl. So it could be um, a pop color in a piece as opposed to the main color of a garment. Um, and I have, I have so much of this yarn that I, could, I would certainly still have enough to also be a pop color in a garment as well. So I'm thinking about a shawl and thinking, oh yes, hand spun shawl. So long story short, I have been working on a new shawl design this month and I have, I am now on try number 15, I think, for this design. Um, I have cast this on, ripped it out, <laughs> cast it on, ripped it out. I knit a significant amount, ripped it all out. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm on try number 15 now. So it's just a part of the creative process, but it's one of the reasons why I don't have <laughs> much to show you in the way of, uh, finish objects and things I'm working on is that this project has taken... A lot of my time and all I have to show for it um, is this <laughs> but I have knit this much 14 times <laughs> and this is number 15 uh, but yes I am working on I'm using two um, skeins of my hand spun yarn uh, partially because I realized my hand spun fingering is definitely thinner than uh, commercial fingering yarn which is not a, not a bad thing but I thought oh, I'll pair it with another hand spun so I'm envisioning this pattern in two different ways so I'm thinking of making a, a, almost like a light and a dark version so this is the light version uh, pairing it with a, a neutral, a natural Shetland actually. Uh, and so the shawl is going to be completely reversible. So I am incorporating uh, brioche knitting as well as double knitting. And so uh, it's been uh, interesting. <laughs> That's code for frustrating, but I've learned a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about the progress. But I definitely, uh, I think I spent two solid weeks on this and then told myself, you have to put that down, Alicia, and you have to do something else. <laughs> 
you can't spend a whole month trying to write a shawl pattern. And typically when I set something down that I'm working on and I'm kind of struggling with it, if I set it down and walk away for a little bit and come back, uh, it usually gets easier. So I thought, you know, two weeks on, two weeks off, and then we'll come back to it. So I'm going to be coming back to this work and hopefully making progress on it. So I am very excited about that. Um, but I just thought I'd share with you the, um, you know, sometimes the creative process it isn't conducive with finishing things and producing an outcome. Uh, sometimes you just have to reiterate the process and until you finally get there and uh this is one of those projects it's not very straightforward for me but i'm having fun trying to combine these two different knitting techniques into one um into one piece so uh and i finally figured it out <laughs> so yeah i'm having fun with that so that is all that I have to share with you this month. Um, like I said, I wanted to have more, but I don't. And that's just the reality of things. Um, next month, I'm looking forward to sharing lots and lots of things with you. Um, especially since I have lots of things that are so close to being finished. Um, that I'll definitely finish those. So uh, up next on the channel, I'm hoping next week to have a uh, feature video for you about uh, weaving my cotton towels and so that will be coming up next Sunday and then the following Sunday will be the middle of the month and so I'll take you on a tour of the garden which I'm very excited about because um, while we've been getting some winter weather here in the Pacific Northwest I woke up to snow on the ground this morning uh, I know in the next month it's it's going to turn into spring so I'm um, hardening off some of my plants to go outside my more w cold weather plants like my spinach and broccoli and onions and so I'm hoping that in the next couple of weeks I'll be able to actually put those outside and that they will thrive out there and I'd really love to have some fresh spinach and lettuce to eat. That would be great. Uh, so I'm hoping that in, in a couple weeks the garden will actually look different. <laughs> it won't be the same, you know, four heads of cabbage to show you. But, uh, but you never know with the weather if there's more um, frost and snow in the forecast. I may hold off on that. I don't know. Time will tell. Uh, but until I see you next time, I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye, everyone.